Hey everyone, welcome to Cam Keyframe Presents 12 Days of Christmas 2021, where I create tutorials 12 days in a row and give away the project files for free on my Patreon page. The link is in the description down below. And today is day number five. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can animate this basic bouncing ball. Uh, but it looks really cool and organic kind of, but it's really easy and it keeps bouncing on forever and ever with only just a couple of keyframes and some little small expressions. So I'm going to show you how I created this in this uh, composition here, which is clean. I have it in Illustrator here as well. You can of course download the project files for free for this project in the description down below. And we have this uh, ball with, with this gradient in between here. Uh, and we have this little mouth, the eyes uh, like this, and these ones are separate. We have the head here and then this flap, the cap of the head, and then we have this shadow. And the shadow is masked inside this, this shape, it's masked inside this ball shape here. But I ungrouped that, I released the clipping mask for importing it into After Effects because that doesn't translate. So here we have all of these separate layers. And uh, what you can see what's happening here is, if we go back to the beginning, you can see the ball kind of squishes in and then it bounces up and then it squishes out a little bit, it gets a little bit longer and then it, it jumps down and squishes in again and then it keeps going. And you can see that the shadow is growing a bit smaller and it's further away and a little bit uh, more transparent. Um, and the eyes, the, the eyes are moving down when it's down and it's going up and the head is coming off of his head as well a little bit though it's moving up a little bit like that and then it's going down. So this is a really easy thing to do, you just need to know how? <laughs> um, yeah, then everything's easy. Okay, so uh, we're going to open this up and go uh, select only the background and the ball and the shadow. So first we're going to focus on this and the rest will come later. And uh, I should have already parented everything. Um, what I want to do is to have all of this stuff. Let's ungroup it. Um, the cap, the flap of the cap, I'm going to parent that to the cap here. And the rest of it, all of it is going to parent to the ball because the ball needs to... Um, have everything attached to it, of course. So we're going to uh, only uh, isolate those three and then the shadow floor and the ball and we're going to animate the ball first. So what we need to do, of course, is position and scale. So click on the P on your keyboard for the position and then hold shift and click S on the keyboard for also open the scale. So we're going to create two keyframes here at the beginning and let's go, uh, let's zoom out a bit, let's go here, let's say 12 frames in the future, doesn't really matter, in the future. 12 frames in the timeline, wow. Um, I'm going to go to my position and I'm just going to slide this up over there, right? And then I'm gonna go a bit further here and let's uh, copy this first keyframe and place it back here. So now it goes up and it goes down a little bit, but uh, I want it to stay up for a little bit. So I'm going to copy this, and paste it over, let's say here, so now it goes up, it stays up and then it goes down. And what I want to do as well is when it goes up, and it, it needs to be going up a little bit further, as you can see in the first example, when it goes up here, uh, and I will have the ball, the position keyframes here, when it's at the final height here, and this is the same keyframe as this one which I copied, it's still, this, the ball is still moving up a little bit, a little bit. And, uh, but nothing is changing here. And that's, what, that's because I have this uh, null object here, which is just this, an empty layer, which only has position keyframes to add a little bit of an extra movement to this ball. So I'll show you how to create that. So uh, first off, we're going to uh, do the scale here. So the scale will need to uh, begin here and end here, of course. So when it's down, it needs to have this position. And a uh, very important thing is before you animate this, put the anchor point here at the bottom with your pen behind tool. So this is the position that it's uh, rotating from or whatever, and also scaling from, because in this case, we're going to scale this squish this down and to turn off this constraint pr proportions because if you don't then you scale the whole thing I only want to scale it like this so put that at 75 and then I'm going to copy this keyframe and paste it over here so now it's squished in and then all the way up here somewhere let's put it at 105 so it's kind of squishes up so now it's yeah, that looks awful, of course, but because we have we have no easing uh, attached to it. Um, so we're going to do that first, uh, this uh, position, because when the ball hits the ground, it needs to instantly jump back up. So that's why uh, just give everything like this a easy ease here. So if you open this up, you can see that this is just a little arc, but I wanted to start really fast here at the top, so I can just drag this point up. 
So now it's going poof, it instantly like moves up and then ends a little bit slower at the top where the, the dead point is. And this one needs to go up, but what I can do here is uh, I have this plugin called Flow, which I highly recommend. So select this and then click on this like first and then uh, first really fast and then slow, apply. And on these two, I want to reverse. So really fast, uh, really slow and then end really fast because when it lands, it has the most speed. So hit apply. And then you have this nice bouncing up effect. And the scale looks a, bit, a little bit weird right now. We're going to do the same thing here. So first off, we're going to start with it. When it goes up, it needs to go really fast. And when it goes down, it needs to go slow and then hit on a high note. So like that. So this looks kind of uh, good. We only miss, we're missing that extra little motion in between when the ball is moving up slowly. So we're going to create a new null object. Here it is. Place it above my ball here and call this ball movement extra. Like that. We're going to parent the ball to that null. So then this null controls this ball shape. And I'm going to go to here to the beginning position. And then a little bit further than the first keyframe from this ball here, I'm going to go, I'm going to place this up just a little bit like that. And then at the end, of course, you want to have the um, beginning a keyframe here as well, so it lands on the floor. And just give this some normal easy ease, and that will do. So now we have this really nice little motion, like that. So it's going to move up and then poof, comes down, but it doesn't keep bouncing. Uh, what we're going to do, we can of course copy all the these keyframes however much you would like. But if you would like to go have this go on until infinity, we're going to add a little simple expression by pressing Option on your keyboard and clicking on the stopwatch, and then typing a loop, and it already says here loop out. Select that. Press Command A to select it, copy it, and then place it on here as well. So this loops. It, what this expression says is that when on the, when it's on the last keyframe, repeat everything again, loop out. So press play, and then it keeps going forever like this. We have our bouncing ball. And we're going to press U to close everything up in the shadow of the floor. Let's give this a scale and the transparency. So press uh, Shift and T. Give this two keyframes. Open the ball up here so I can see. And then when it's up here, somewhere at the top, kind of like this, I want the scale to be very small. Also, only let's uncheck this uh, box here as well, because I only want to scale it from uh, to the middle like this. Uh, and then put the opacity at maybe 50 or something. And then copy the keyframe here and here, and also give this the same easing Oh, and then these ones slow. And then also give this the same expression. Oh, loop out and loop out. So now the shadow moves as well along with it. Looks great. So now we're going to add some more stuff. I'm going to single out the eye and the pupil as well here. So we're going to work on that. And uh, let's open our ball so I can have the keyframes. And this pupil, this eye doesn't really need to do anything. It just needs to be attached to... Uh, or maybe we could give it a little bit of position. So I'm going to um, parent the pupil to the eye like this, and then the eye can get a little bit of a position. So when it's down, it's maybe it's down uh, here a little bit. And then when it's up here, it's up here. And then still up here and still down there like that. Give this some easy ease. Let's see how the, if, it, if it looks any better. Yeah, it looks nice. Give this some loop out action as well. And then this pupil, I want this to kind of bounce or go down here. So we're gonna give this a position keyframe um, on the highest point here, like this kind of go position. And then at the bottom, at the beginning here, I'm going to place this down a little bit and copy the keyframe, place it here. So now this kind of moves down. Let's give this some easing as well. See how this looks. So it's up and then down, and this is going to be a little bit later. So it starts moving down right here, maybe a bit later, even. Boom. Yeah, cool. And give this some loop out as well, of course. But it's not, it's, I only want this to be visible in this white shape, of course. So I can do that by duplicating the eye and placing it above our pupil here, and then going to track mat and alpha mat like that, which works. And we're going to open up the eye and press U and delete all of these keyframes and just uh, parent this 
to this other eye so I only have these keyframes to worry about. So you can do it like this, or what you can do is I'm going to turn off the track mat and delete this eye. I'm going to add a effect to it, let's call it the help and then set mat, set mat effect, so it's a channel and then set mat. Click it, and then what this does, I can uh, click here on I, and then it also instantly tracks that with this little um, effect here. We don't need to have this duplicate shape, no track mat. So this also works fine. I'm going to duplicate the I and the pupil, so pressing Command D. Oops, 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 yeah, there it is. And then this uh, I, we're going to have to position this to the right, so select, because it has a precision keyframes, if I uh, if I want to move it to the right here, then everything is ruined. So I'm going to select all of this uh, well, while I'm on the keyframe here, and I select all of the keyframes, and then I can place it to the right. And you can see that my pupil is moving because this pupil number two, this need to add this track mat to eye number two. There you go. So then we have the eyes. Funny. Okay, cool. Um, we have that finished. Then we're going to go to the mouth. Doesn't really do anything. It's just there. Like really a little funny mouth. And then we have the cap as the last part. So we have the cap shadow, the cap flap, or the cap and the cap flap. So I have this uh, cap flap. The anchor point is over here. And it's you can rotate this. And this one is over here. You can rotate this as well. This is one shape. And I have this uh, cap flap as a separate layer. I don't really need that right now. I just have it in case I want to maybe give this some extra rotation here as well. But in this case, I'm only going to rotate the whole cap here. So open up the ball and then the cap and pressing position and rotation because I want to move it up as well a little bit. So at the bottom here, it's fine. Position and rotation, boom. And then when it's up here at the highest point, kind of, I want this to move up a little bit and rotate a little bit, which looks nice. See, this not really connecting. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Yeah, like that. All right, so that's nice. And I can copy the keyframes here to the bottom. Of course, so it's down again. And then the same thing here. The same keyframes, and on these ones, these ones. So that's. Yeah, and then add a loop out expression, of course. Don't forget it because then it won't loop. I think the rotation can be a little bit more. I like it when it's like doing that. And then maybe add this a little bit later so it starts rotating back a bit later so you don't actually see that much. Yeah, nice. And now the only thing left to do is to um, hide the part of the shadow, so only make it visible within this ball. And for this, I'm going to use a track mat, so duplicate this ball shape, place it above the cap shadow. Let's call this cap shadow mat. And then cap shadow, and then go to my track mat, alpha mat. Boom, it's only visible within that shape. Um, and maybe, no, I think that's it. So yeah, uh, do we need to uh, give everything, any, anything some easing as well? No, everything is eased, everything has a loop out rotation. You can double press E on your keyboard to open all of your expressions and you see it, everything is red here and everything looks good. So yeah, this is your basic uh, ball movement. You can see the eyes bounce a little bit different than it did in my first example here. Um, yeah, you just move some keyframes around to change some effects how you would like them. But this is the main idea. I think uh, I've also changed the opacity of the shadow a little bit in this case. So the opacity here is 50%, yeah. And maybe here you can uh, make that 50 as well, so it's a bit less dark. Uh, and you can also move the uh, maybe move the shadow up a little bit as well. So the ball, open that position. Nice, and then when it's up here, maybe you can move the shadow up a little bit because it's less visible because the cap is further away over here and then like this. So you can put all of the details in here as much as you like. Cool. Nice, looking great. So this wraps up day number five. If you would like to download the project files for this video, head on over to the description box down below and click on the link for the Patreon page. There I will upload all of the project files for free. And while you're there, maybe consider subscribing to the Patreon channel as well for even more cool stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.